Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Caleb Gordon Podcast. I'm your host, Caleb Gordon. This podcast is going to be a little bit different. I found an archived audio of my mom's testimony, and it was on a Sunday night, and I wanted to share this testimony of my mom with the podcast audience. So I pray it blesses you and encourages you this week. There's, I, I, there is someone in the church that is often... Um, overlooked and sometimes probably misunderstood and I'm going to have her come up tonight and I'm going to ask her some questions and she's going to speak to you tonight and that's Janie Gordon. Now uh, I didn't tell her this and the reason I didn't tell her this is she wouldn't have been here (coughs) for this had had I told her. So Mrs. Gordon, Mrs. Gordon would you make your way on up here please? I didn't catch that. What was that? That's plenty close. What, what do you mean that's plenty close? All right, now, here's what I, what, oftentimes, uh, One of the things that you perhaps don't uh, uh, know about me is uh, I don't think you really know my wife all that well. I really don't. Seriously, I know that some of you think you do, but I guarantee I know her a whole lot better than you. And uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the inspirations in my life that God has placed in my life, one of the greatest support structures that God has placed in my life is my lovely wife. And she truly is a gift from God. And I and uh, I just thought tonight that we just pause for a moment and that we would uh, <laughs> that we would embarrass her completely. I just want to ask you a couple of questions and I, I just uh, uh, tonight if I may I do that? <laughs> How many of you are able to read that look? Okay. Look, even Bob over here was able to, you saw the look, didn't you? And I got the look tonight. Um, Ms. Gordon, when were you saved? Uh, In 1971. 1971. You have to pull that closer than that. Take it out of the stand. You just speak right. Up. In, when were you saying? In 1971. Damn. All right. In All 1971. Right. Where? Whereabouts? At Jim McNair's house. All right. And uh, how long have you known me, total? I met you in July of 1966. July of 1966, and mm-hmm. and uh, have we been dating and then got married ever since then? Is that right? Any, anything you'd like to say about that? <laughs> Up until tonight, it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look at you. Look at you. Ah, that's right, Janie. What? Uh, We've known each other since. We met at the kitty farm. We made cotton candy. And you made cotton candy? And I was driving the train. All right. And is that when we started dating? I don't remember. Is that what it was? All right. And 
what happened? You, that kind of gives a background about the two of us. You and you were saved in '71. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was '71. What What happened? Ed was saved first. Um, Ed was saved first, and then we start. We started going. To the I we'd gone out there. I don't know, two three times, I guess. And I told Ed, you know, I didn't. I never. I was a member of of. Uh, It's that microphone. Hold that cord in a certain way. Wiggle it. It's on. It's on. I was a member of the church out at Labity Heights, but I was not a saved member of the church. I was just a member of the church. But anyway, I had told Ed after, after we'd started going out to Oak Park that I never realized that Jesus had actually died for me. Um, and I told him one night, I said, you know, Ed, I, I didn't really realize that, that Jesus had actually really died for me and that he, that that's how you be saved, that's how you are saved. I didn't know that. And so Ed said, oh, we got to go see Brother Jim right now. So he <laughs> jumped in the car and ran out to Brother Jim's and Brother Jim took, us, took me through the plan of salvation, and, which I had really never even heard all that until Brother Jim was telling us, telling it to Ed, and I was sitting there listening, and of course I didn't say anything, I just listened, because here I was a church member, I was supposed to know that, but I didn't. So that's how I was saved, when I was saved. What's it like being a pastor's wife? <laughs> it's really fun. A lot of people say, I wouldn't be in your shoes for anything, but we have more friends, and not just in Bartlesville, we have friends all over the country. And they're friends that really love us for who we are. I mean, they've seen us do dumb things. They've seen us, well, me. <laughs> no. But I mean, they, they love us for who we are. And we have really, really neat friends, and it's, it's just, it's fun. I, I enjoy it. I don't, I've had preacher's wives, you know, say, I had one lady say that she didn't have any friends because she was the preacher's wife. And she said, you know, I, you can't get close to people. You're just not supposed to do that. And I said, oh, I guess I didn't know that. Because <laughs> I do. I, I have a lot of friends. <clears throat> that, that's it? That's it. What's the downside of being a pastor's wife? <laughs> so, no, no, not the pastor part. Who said that? I want to know who said that. All right. Amen. Amen. That's probably some truth to that, Don. <laughs> I don't know. I guess when my kids were little, I used to worry about what everybody thought about my kids. Do you worry about that anymore? No, they yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know a downside. I really don't. I don't know. I can't think of one other than that. No negative side to being a pastor's wife? No. What about the expectations that people put on you? Is that a problem for you? Not for me, because I am what I am. I mean, I, I don't try to be something I'm not, because I'm just me. <laughs> I'm just me. Now, if you want to interrupt and have a question during this session, you just help yourself. What do you think about children? I think they're from the Lord and I think that they're the most precious thing we have and I think that too many parents don't realize that. They just think that there's something that happened to come along and or ooh it was a mistake. I didn't mean to get pregnant and there are no mistakes. God makes children and he gives us kids and 
I just think they're wonderful. Hi, kids. <laughs> as, a, as a mother and a wife, what do you think your priorities are in life? I think my first priority is to God. My next priority is to you and then to my kids and then to the church. But my, my number one priority on, on this earth is to, to my family, to you and the boys, my mom. <laughs> is it a problem for you to submit to your husband? No. What does that mean? That means I, I know what makes you happy and I try to, I try to do that because making you and the boys happy makes me happy. I've heard people say, oh, that's, you gotta, you gotta make yourself happy. You have to do what, you have to do your thing. You have to do this, this, and this. But to me, making, making my family happy makes me happy. I mean, that's just what I like to do. And I'd rather be with you and the kids than anybody. And people, people have said, the other day this guy, well, this man that I work with said that he and his wife go off and two or three times a year they go on these big time vacations. They go overseas and they leave their kids and they do this and this. And I didn't say this, but I thought, I wouldn't leave my kids and go on vacation for anything because we take our kids with us. That's the fun of it. You know, we have, we have fun with, with the boys. I mean, I, I, would, I would be lonesome if I didn't have the boys with us. That's mean, just me, though. What about me? I mean, <laughs> well, you yeah. can come, too. <laughs> well, I mean. You are a part of me, though. <laughs> what do you think about your two boys? What do I think about them? I think they're wonderful. This lady at school the what other day What mother was, wouldn't? Well. <laughs> Go ahead. This lady at school the other day said, I don't remember what we're talking about, but she, and she didn't know that I was preacher's wife. She said, oh, you know, preacher's kids, they're the worst thing in the world. And I said, <laughs> I said, don't say that. And she said, why, are you a preacher's kid? And I said, no, I'm a preacher's wife. And she went, oh. And then she says, then she goes, what, what denominate, what are you? And I said, I'm Southern Baptist. She goes, oh, Lord, they're the worst. <laughs> I said, well, that's just because the deacon's kids taught them all it. <laughs> those deacons back here, where are they? Pick them out. Pick those deacons out. What, uh, in your relationship with your children, what do you see as important as a mother? That they respect me and their dad and other adults. The thing that distresses me the worst is seeing kids that are disrespectful to adults and that are disrespectful to their teachers. And of course, working at the school, I see so much stuff. And it's just, it breaks your heart. I mean, you just want to, it's not the kids, it's the parents. And they let, they let them get by with it. And it's just really sad. Because if they can't respect adults, how are they going to respect God? I mean, that's, you know, they, they need to learn that. Well, how would you establish, how would you establish a child's <laughs> respect for God? How would you go about that? by teaching him what God's word says. And that they, when they're disrespectful to me as a mother or as an adult, they're, they're not being disrespectful to me, they're being disrespectful to God because God tells them to obey their parents. And I've always stressed to the kids and I tell my Sunday school kids this, that if you, when you're disrespectful to mom, you're not disrespectful to mom, you're disrespectful to God because you're disobeying what God tells you to do. And you don't want to do that. You don't do, you believe, want to... do you believe in corporal punishment? Yes, I do. Do you? Did you ever exercise it on your two kids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, Not enough. Obviously, it wasn't enough. <laughs> what, what in your life right now, where you are, you've been at Trinity Baptist Church 
five years. <clears throat> what do you think about these last five years of your life? When I left Wright, um, right it, where? Wright, Wyoming. Okay. It was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, and then we came back and we went, we, we had kind of a dry spell. I think it was kind of a dry spell. And then we came to Trinity. And when we first came here, you know, I thought, okay, you know, it, it's a nice church, but, you know, it'll never be right. And right now, I think that if we had to leave, it'd be as hard as right. Because I love it. And I love the people here. And I have a lot of friends here. Don't cry. I know. I don't. <laughs> and But I like it. It's been fun. It is fun. So. Has this church home been important to you? Sure. Have you ever quit church? Uh-uh. Ever? Anybody ever have to beg you to go to church? Did you ever, no. Did you ever have to beg your, your husband to go? A few times. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What are the goals that you have for yourself? To be what God wants me to be. Just to, right now my goal, and I really think that God has put me in this place I'm at at school, to be a witness to those kids. Again, I just see such, it's really sad down there. And Joe knows, Joe's, Joe's there, she sees the same thing I see. And I think God's put her there for the same reason. But. I think right now that's my goal. I think that's what, I think that's where God wants me to be right now. If you could change anything in your <clears throat> life, would you change anything? No, I don't think so. You like your life the way it is? Wouldn't change anything? What about your husband? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, wouldn't get rid of me now? Nah, oh, that's encouraging. <laughs> Amen. If you had a, a bit of advice to a husband, to the men, young men, single men, husbands, what bit of advice would you give men in their relationship with, with, uh, with uh, women, with their wives or girlfriends? Listen up, Caleb. <laughs> Don't, don't try to make your wife be submissive to you. You're not going to be able to do that. Just love her. If you, if, you love, if you love your wife and you really love your wife, you really want to be with her. I hear people talk about, you know, the, oh, I love so-and-so, but they're not with them all the time. I, I wonder, you know, why do they think they love them if they don't want to be with them all the time? And if you would just love her, that she's going to submit to you. She's going to want to to do what's right. She's going to want to make you happy. And I have a little plaque on the wall at my house that says the. This is for the man, but it goes also for the woman. It says the greatest gift a man can give his children is to love his is to love their mother, and it's the same. The same thing for the greatest gift a woman can give to her kids is to love their daddy, and to to show that love to the, around the kids. Don't don't cut him down in front of the kids, even when he does stupid things. <laughs> but really, Who, are you talking about another husband here? Yeah, no, somebody else. I'm sure else. you were. <laughs> Do you ever argue with your husband? I don't. I disagree with you sometimes. I don't really argue with you, though. I mean, I disagree with you, but we never fight. We disagree kind of loud sometimes. No. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't fight. Do we? And, you know, she's telling the truth. I think the kids will say amen to that. We don't fight. We just, I mean, it's just, it's just yeah. not, I don't know. We just, 
uh, we don't fight. And that's, that is true. Do um, you have anything you'd like to share with this group? We're about over here. Do, I just wanted to, but, well, <laughs> they never get, to, I'm the one that gets, they, they, and I'm telling you, this is the most important factor on this earth in this earthly life that I have. Uh, she is one of the most important factors in my life. She is, uh, um, she understands me when no one else does. And she'll listen to me when I don't want to talk to any of you. And uh, you know what I'm, and everybody here knows exactly what I'm saying, don't you? I mean, you, this isn't anything. You all are sitting there nodding your heads because you know what I'm talking about. She understands me. And did you know she even understands me when I'm quiet? I don't, even when I don't say anything, she knows what I'm thinking. It's amazing. Do you have anything? This is your opportunity to preach tonight, sister in Christ. If you had a message for this church tonight, what would it be? Just like Viola was saying a minute ago, don't, or Barbara, I don't know who said it, somebody said it, don't, things are going really well here, we're growing, we're building, everything's really, really growing, Satan's going to start trying to divide us and make us fuss with each other, don't let that happen. Um, Everybody loves everybody so much in this church, and I just, you know, I, I would hate to see anything like that happen. Not that anything has or is happening, but it's going. Satan's going to try to wreck it some way, because he doesn't want us to grow. He doesn't want our church to to get filled up and for us all to love each other. Okay. It's the only thing I know. Do you have any questions for her? Speak up. Mrs. Gordon, you've been a very good sport at this tonight. And I don't have to sleep with Sparky, do I? <laughs> so, no answer. That's... Nah, you put that right there. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Come right on down here. Again, you oftentimes see me and oftentimes you hear me talk about her and things that happen at our home. And uh, I thought it would be good tonight if we just take a moment. She's been here five years and you've never seen her do that in five years, have you? And I guarantee it'll be another five years before you see that happen again. Someone say amen. She just doesn't do that real well. That is, she didn't like to do it real well. She did real well, but she doesn't like to do that real well. Anything need to be said? We're supposed to have a time of fellowship in the back, and, and uh, I don't want to be late for it. But let me say this before we dismiss to that. This past five years here at Trinity Baptist Church has been a very special time for my wife and I and my two boys. You all can remember, my boys literally have grown up here at Trinity Baptist Church, and probably about one of the only church experiences they remember uh, is this one. Caleb may remember others, uh, but David in particular, because when we came to, back to Oklahoma from uh, being home missionaries in Wyoming, David was in diapers, and he's just barely out of them now. And uh, <laughs> you, you parents know exactly what I'm talking about. Say amen. I mean, he was just in diapers yesterday, and now then he's 15, 14, 15, 15 and a half, three quarters, whatever he is, already. And in time, just, you, get, you all know exactly what I'm talking about. These kids grow up like they do. And, but this, is, this church home to us is very special, and I want you to know that each one of you, as the pastor of the church, uh, my greatest privilege is to preach to a people who love the Lord Jesus Christ and who love his word. And I want to, and each one of you that encourages me every day um, that I see you, you say, keep it up. Thank you for that message. And uh, 
uh, you just encourage my heart to dig deeper and dig harder. And your love for me and the way you show your love for me is very special. And I want to say thank you. Now, in the matter of giving me money, listen to me carefully. I don't want to seem ungrateful because I'm not. But I need to be giving more to you. Now listen, you don't need to, listen, you don't need to be giving more to me. I need to be giving more to you. And uh, it honors me that you do that. It really does. And I'm not, this is not a berating. I'm just, sometimes I don't do real well at receiving. Someone say amen. So until God gives me grace to do that, you just bear with me. How was that? Was that better? Yes. Well, it's your fault. That is the Holy Spirit of God encouraging my heart and has led me in new directions in the last uh, year or so and has given me, uh, and I'm not trying to sermonize what you said, but just as a point of fact, has given me more understanding of the Word at, at all at one time than I've ever gotten in my spiritual life previous to this past year. Now, I've gotten, always gotten bits and fragments and pieces along the way, but there's been so much that's come to me in the last year that I don't know what to do with it. That is, I just don't, I don't know how to handle it. I don't know where to put it. Uh, I don't know where to file it. I don't even know what to say hardly anymore. If, if, um, well, I, I appreciate that. Ruth, thank you. God bless you for saying that. I appreciate that. But, but I want, I want to say thank you for giving me all that you give me because what you give me is more than just the money. What you give me is your love, your love for the Word, your love for Jesus Christ, your love and your unconditional acceptance of my family. You even love my kids, and I, I, I'm just at a loss. And, uh, but, but you do, and you give so, you pray for us, and you encourage us, and I just want to say this past five years has just been a splendid, splendid time for us to be here. And we want to thank you uh, for your spiritual support uh, as a church family of us in this place. We're just like you. Uh, God just placed us in a special spot in the church. And I want to say thank you for allowing us to minister to you. Well, I pray that broadcast encouraged your heart. I know it did mine. It's good to hear my mom and dad's voice. It's been several years since they have gone on to be with the Lord. And it's just a comfort in my own heart to know that mom and dad loved King Jesus, pursued him, and lifted him high. Their home was a home of, of Christ as King. And I am just eternally grateful for parents who love Jesus and pass that on to myself and my brother. So I pray that this encouraged you and, and challenged your heart this week. Um, maybe even had a little couple of laughs along the way. Um, love you all. Thank you for taking time to listen to the broadcast. If you'd like to get more episodes of the Caleb Gordon podcast, check out calebgordon.org. We pray it blesses you and encourages you in your walk with Christ. Just wanted to say thank you to one of our amazing sponsors, Revo Financial. For many people, financial stewardship isn't just about smart financial decisions. It's about aligning those decisions with their faith and values. Revo Financial brings biblical wisdom to the financial planning and investment process. Whether you're planning for retirement, college, or special charitable strategies, Revo Financial helps you create a roadmap that aligns your spiritual values. Visit RevoFinancial.com and set up your complimentary one-on-one -on -one appointment today and start building a future that honors your faith. Revo Financial.